Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my video today. Today, this is Mr. Myers is talking to you, and we are going to talk about probability of independent and dependent events. So we're really talking about two events, and actually, we can do this for multiple events. Um, the same rules apply. So just a reminder what probability is, a ratio that measures how likely something is to happen. And uh, the symbol we use is the P, parentheses, the probability of something happening. Um, independent events. Now, we talked about this a little bit already, but independent events are when one event doesn't affect the other event. So we'll take a look at what those, those are, you know. Um, we'll take a look at some examples. And, and a lot of times, we'll see things that with or without replacement, right? If we replace the car, a card back in or we re replace it back in, um, then we're not changing the amount of possibilities there are. When we don't replace things, we are changing the amount of possibilities. Um, when we pick the, our next whatever. So dependent event, that would be dependent when something has an effect on the, pre, the next uh, event. So when the first event affects the second event, we have dependent events. Let's take a look at some examples. Um, so by the way, what we're going to do here is we're going to use what we call the uh, multiplication rule of probability. So here's how it works. Uh, it's similar to the counting <clears throat> principle, right? When you remember the counting principle, when we had two events uh, and we're looking at the number of ways of those events, we would multiply those two things. Well, when we're doing the probability, it's the same thing. This is a multiplication symbol here for some reason it didn't show up. So we multiply the probability of A times the probability of B. Simple as that. Multiply the probability of A times the probability of B. Um, it says following A. This just means that uh, we have to we have to really decide on on what is uh, happening here when we um, when we do our second probability. It makes a lot more sense than what is written out here. Um, just a side note: we do use some other terms. This is p of a and b, so we use this big um, we use this upside down u. It's called an intersection. Okay, so. I don't really like using the comma all that much. You see the comma, but I, I see the intersection a lot more. But that's because I'm an AP Stats teacher. So when I see uh, probability, I think of AP Stats. So uh, this is Algebra 2, a little bit, little bit simpler than AP Stats here. Um, but you know, the same ideas. So if you can grab this and understand this idea, it's going to help you a lot in statistics when you go on um, in college or in an AP class. So um, let's go and take a look at what I'm talking about. Remember, this is. Um, Probability is a lot easier than we think it is. We just really have to just not make it make uh, make it harder than it is, right? Don't make it harder than it is. Just think using common sense. And I know for a lot of us, that's not easy to do. Um, but we'll do our best shot at this. So uh, let's take a look. A die is rolled twice. Okay, so we're going to take one dice and we're going to roll it twice. Find the probability that we roll a five and then a one. Well, let's think about this for a second. If I roll a five first, and then I pick up my dice, when I roll a one, did it, does it matter what I rolled in the first time? Does this change? Does the probability change here depending upon what I rolled the first roll? It does not. I still have a one in six chance to roll a one, right? So these events are independent because it doesn't matter what I rolled here when I rolled here. It doesn't change the probability at all. So what's the probability? The probability is going to be my first probability, the probability of getting a five times the probability of getting a 1. So what's the probability of getting a 5? 1 sixth. What's the probability of getting a 1? 1 sixth. What's that probability? 1 36th. That's it. All right? And I know some of you are like, oh my god, fractions again. But listen, fractions are nice for probabilities. They're easy to work with because multiplication for fractions is not bad. But really when we're dealing with probability, we can have it in three ways. We can have it as a fraction. We can have it as a decimal. And we could have as a percent. And either of these ways is acceptable when we're talking about probability. Um, just make sure you know that, remember, that the probability can never be greater than one, right? Okay, or less than zero for that matter. Um, a die is rolled twice. Find each probability, the probability of two even numbers. All right, again, we're, we're only rolling one die. So I'm going to roll one, I'm going to get two. And I'm going to roll the same, but I'm going to pick it up and roll it again. Again. These are independent because it doesn't matter what I, I got in the first one. Um, it just matters what I get in each one. So what is the probability of getting 
a even number on the first term. So we got we're really doing this probability even and even, right? So what's the probability of getting an even times the probability of getting an even? So what's the probability of getting even? Well, there are three even numbers out of six, so that's three sixths. What's the probability of get, getting an even here? Three sixths. So we got one half times one half. The probability is one fourth. Okay, that's it. Now, if we were rolling two dice, um, that might be a, a, a different thing, okay? Two cards are drawn from a standard deck. Find each probability if no replacement occurs. Okay, so which means I'm going to take I'm going to take the first card out. Okay, so this is this is what I'm looking at. I'm looking at a heart, the probability of getting a heart, and then getting another heart. Now, notice here, if I take out a heart from the deck, remember there's 13 hearts. All right, there's 13 hearts. I'm going to use right here. There are 13 hearts in the deck, 52 cards. If I take out a heart the first time, okay, let's say I pull a heart the first time, then now I don't, I no longer have 13 hearts. I have 12 hearts. I don't have 52 cards. I have 51 cards. So the amount of possibilities changes for the second time. These are dependent events. All right, so what's the probability of getting a, a heart? So this is what we're doing. The probability of getting a heart the first time and the probability of getting a heart the second time. So what's the probability of pulling a heart the first time? We have 13 cards. We have 52 cards in the deck. So we have 13 times 52. What's the probability of getting a heart the second time? Well, we've already pulled one card out. We'll say we pulled a heart out. So we've got 12 hearts out of 51 cards. All right. So then we're going to do some, some simplifying and multiplying. And we'll get 1 over 17. All right. And that's our probability. Let's take a look. I got some practice problems here for you. So I'm going to do this last one here and then we'll... we'll just leave it off with some practice. Um, two cards are drawn from standard deck. Find each probability of no replacement occurs. So we're dealing with the same thing. These are going to be dependent events. The probability of getting an ace and then a king. So what's the probability of getting an ace? There are four aces in the deck out of 52 cards. And then we've already taken a card out, but we haven't taken an ace out, right? So there's still four kings in the deck, um, but we've taken a card out. So there's 51 left. All right, so we got 4 over 52 times 4 over 51, which equals 4 over 663. Huh. Wow, that's a crazy fraction. Uh, if I wanted to write this as a decimal, it would be 0 .0006. All right? All right, here's some practice problems. So why don't you try this one? Remember, when I put on a practice problem, just pause it. Because uh, when you pause it, then you have a chance to practice it and then um, and then start again and then see what you got. Okay? Because I'm going to go through these pretty quick. If, if you don't pause it, you're just going to get the answer. And, you know, some of you are like, oh, that's all I want is the answer. But you should really try it. Okay? Um, here are the answers for this one. All right, it's just that's the same one as we just did, right? Okay, here's another one. Ooh, two face cards. Face cards. Those are Jack's. Queens and Kings. Here's your answer. Okay. All right. So uh, let's take a look at a couple more here. Um, there are eight action, three romantic comedies, and five children's DVDs. Well, that's similar to what I have in my house. Actually, this would be like, you know, 35 children's DVDs. Um, my kids just watch a lot of DVDs. Suppose uh, two DVDs selected random. So I'm selecting random with replacement. So I'm going to pick one, and then I'll put it back, and then I'll pick another one independent right so calculate the probability what's the probability that i get an action dvd well i got eight action dvds out of six, seven eight what 16 16 total so i've got eight action out of 16 times i'm gonna put it back so now i got eight again still got 16 that looks like one half times one half which is one fourth man this is this is easy stuff right this is not too bad Hopefully, hopefully you're thinking it's easy. <laughs> if you're not, I'm not doing a great job here. Um, two action DVs if no replacement occurs. So that means we're not going to replace it back. These are dependent. Still got 16, right? Now I'm going to pick one action out. So I'm going to have 8 out of 16. Then I don't put it back. So I only have 7 left and 15 left there. All right? So what does that give me? Let's see. Give me 1 half times 7 over 15 which equals 7 over 30. 
right, that's the probability. Um, if let's say we want a romantic comedy and then a children's DVD, if no replacement occurs, so again, no replacements dependent, the romantic comedy is going to be three out of sixteen. Now we did not take we we did not take any comp, any children's out, so we still have five children to choose from, but we only have fifteen left here. All right, so that's we could do some really quick math here. One sixteen, right? That's an easy, easy fractions to deal with. Okay. All right. Here's a couple practice problems, and I'm done. All right. So take a look at this one. Pause it now. Here you go. Boom. That's it, folks. That's the end of this video. See you later, alligator. In a while, crocodile.